people have had very different experiences of life in lockdown. For some, it's been a frantic time of trying to look after children in cramped conditions while still working full time. For others, it's been a quiet, reflective time of reading and gardening. But for all of us over the last few weeks, life has focused on our household. We may have had to adapt the spaces in which we live for remote working or homeschooling. We may have had a good spring clean, turned out some cupboards or even done a bit of DIY. We may have needed to work our relationships with those with whom we live. In different ways, we've all had to work out how to make the household function best for everyone who shares it. The household is the unit of society over which we have most control and responsibility. That's why in the ordination service, clergy are instructed to order their household in a Christian way. But that's true of all the baptised. And whether we live alone or with friends, in a family group or in community, Christians should do their best to order the household in a way that takes account of everyone within it as well as looking generously and hospitably to those outside. Although we're told that Jesus himself was an itinerant without a fixed home, quite a few of his parables are about the ordering of a household, from just stewardship to showing generosity to neighbours in the middle of the night, even the material that the house is built on. And the household then becomes an important metaphor in the New Testament for the new community of the church. St Paul says in his letter to the Ephesians that we are no longer strangers and aliens, but citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. So the church is meant to be a big household that, like our own, takes account of everyone who lives there, because everyone is a child of God. If we think of the church as a project of shaping strangers into a household, then that informs a Christian vision for our wider society and nation too. It's worth remembering that the word economy comes from the Greek word oikos, which means household. And what a pandemic like this brutally exposes is the people who are overlooked in the ordering of the household the people whose lives and livelihoods are too precarious to withstand this kind of disruption. And that seems particularly unacceptable when so many of those people, nurses and care workers, supermarket employees, refuse collectors, cleaners, are those on whom our economy, our household, is crucially dependent at this time. So as the lockdown slowly lifts, we will be emerging from the confinement of our individual households. But let's hold on to that image of the household, a place ordered in the interests of all who share it, as the model for the fairer, kinder world we would like to see when this crisis is over.